Okay, it's new camera time for me today. I've, uh, I've got a camera to open and it's uh, a new one from ZWO. So very exciting. And the idea behind this video is I'm gonna be comparing it to the uh, much more expensive camera that I was initially thinking of getting for the last kind of two years off and on. And that's the ASI, ZWSI 533 MC Pro. Now, I wanted that camera because it's got zero amp glow and very low read noise, and it's a very good camera for deep sky imaging, but it's close to a thousand pounds. And that's the thing that's kind of been putting me off. Even though it's very good and you're getting your money's worth, can't really justify that, really. If I'm spending a thousand pounds on a camera, I need it to be able to do, I need it to be a Swiss army knife. I need it to be able to, film my videos, take pictures of the kids and take pictures of things in space as well. So if it's just a dead if it's a dedicated astronomy camera, I want it to be a bit more affordable and this could be the contender for that. It's the new ASI 585 with the Sony IMX585 sensor, the same sensor that's in the Player One Uranus, uh, which my friend Luke's been playing about with on his channel, Luke Matiko. Check him out. He's been using his IMX585 sensor on a Rasa F2, getting very good results. Uh, but what I'm going to do today here is I'm going to try and justify why this would be a good budget alternative to the 533 MC Pro. So as I'm unboxing now, I'm gonna talk a bit about some of the specs between the two. I'll start off with what's better about the 533. Um, there's gonna be a few things that are better because it costs two and a half times the price roughly. Well, over two times the price. It's 950 Earth tokens versus 399 Earth tokens. Now, it's a cooled camera, the 533, which means in hot weather, you've not got the noise to deal with on the sensor on long exposures. So you can cool that sensor down to very low temperatures below zero, and it's gonna get rid of a lot of that noise now, the new 585 camera that I'm testing doesn't have any cooling, but it does have very low read noise. So I'm hoping that'll help make up for this a little bit. Now, the 533 does have a lot more bit depth. It's a 14-bit camera, whereas the 585 is a 12-bit camera. And that basically equates to four times as many shades between black and white for the 533 Pro camera. 14 bits is what we're that's kind of like cinema camera level bit depth, like you see with Hollywood movies nowadays, that can really see into shadows and really see into highlights. That's the kind of bit depth the 533 Pro has got, like a cine camera amount of bit depth. So quite incredible, really. It just gives you a lot of push and pull in processing without making your image full to bits. But the new 585 sensor does have 12 bits which is still respectable compared to most mirrorless cameras, consumer mirrorless cameras out there, which are probably registering around about 10 bit. So even a 12 bit camera has over 4,000 shades between black and white, so plenty of different color levels there. Um, the 533 does have a bigger squarer sensor. It's a one inch square sensor with a 16 mil diagonal and the 585 sensor is more oblong, more kind of like a 16 by nine aspect ratio or similar. And it's a one over 1.2 inch sensor. Slightly better well depth on the 533 at 50,000 electrons versus 40,000. So a little bit better there, but both of these cameras have the fact that they're zero amp glow cameras in common and they're full spectrum. The things that it actually does better than the 533 is the 585 has better quantum efficiency. It's got 91% quantum efficiency compared to 80% quantum efficiency. So it makes use of about 11% more of the photons at the sensor. And it's got better frame rate, partly because it's a smaller sensor, I should imagine, but you can rattle off 47 frames per second with the new 585 versus 20 for the 533. But the read noise is better, and that's the inerrant noise of the sensor from the circuitry. The bass noise is lower on the new 585. It's 
1.8 electrons versus, I think the lowest that the 533 goes down to is 1.0, but it ranges from 1.0 to 3.8 electrons. So noticeably better read noise with, this, with these new generations of sensors. And I think that's gonna really help make up for the, the lack of cooling, for example, but really are testing it to the extreme because Yesterday was the hottest recorded temperatures in the UK, like in in sort of modern history, like over 40 degrees. And I think it was 30, I registered 39 in the shade here. So I think we're going to be dealing with some very, when I'm testing this camera at night, we're going to be dealing with some very high sensor temperatures in the region of 20, 25 degrees C. So I think this is going to be almost a worst case scenario. But anyway, I'm going to get it set up in the observatory. Um, you might spot that I've got an ASI Air Plus running now. So everything's running off my phone, uh, which is amazing. I'm not going back ever. And we'll see what we can capture with this new ASI 585MC camera, which I'm hoping will be a budget alternative to the 533. I think I mentioned that, didn't I? Okay, over to some very rough and ready test shots I managed to get in a gap of the clouds. These are FITS files that have been converted to PNG straight away, no kind of processing whatsoever. A very, very warm night. The average sensor temperature for these exposures was around 20 degrees C, so quite an extreme test. This is 60 seconds exposure at gain 200, and you can see we framed M81 quite nicely. And there is a bit of noise, but you can see the object very clearly. And here we are moving on to an 120 second exposure. As you can see, the signal and the noise has gained a little bit, but still quite respectable especially considering the conditions which were crazy hot one of the hottest nights i've ever experienced so really an extreme test pentultimately we have 180 second test here you can see there's a bit of gradient coming in because there's no kind of filters used with these whatsoever and finally i pushed it all the way up to five minutes and there's quite severe gradient from the sky glow having no filter whatsoever i mean that could partly be uh, noise or the sky glow i don't actually know but the one thing i'll take from this is you can really clearly see m81 in quite good detail on a single exposure and the noise would only reduce with stacking so i'm quite positive about what this camera can do in in colder climates and with stacking and with filters and with a coma corrector and with darks and with flats and bias and all the rest of it so very promising very quick start and i uh, hope you enjoyed that video i hope it gave you a little bit of insight into this new sensor by zwo and if you like that maybe check out this video which will teach you all about some lovely targets to image and see in the summer triangle